Well, hello, everybody. This is Laurie again. Um, yesterday, I was working on the bag that we've been working on forever. <laughs> and I finally decided I'm just going to try to do as much as I can on each video. Um, I have, you know, as everybody probably knows, we just recently moved. I'm still moving in. My sewing room is like flipped upside down. Um, oh, and before I forget, my um, my videos have mirrored so that my left hand appears to be my right hand when I'm sewing. And I don't right now have time to figure out why or how to fix it. So we're just going to proceed as though I'm in some sort of alternate universe. All right, so yesterday I was cutting out the straps um, for the bag. Um, just to reiterate, it is the McCall's Fashion Accessories K-Wit Design M5822, and we are working on the medium size bag. Uh, there will be some changes made, like I always do, but um, that's one of the best parts about sewing. And speaking of sewing, this is September, September is National Sewing Month, so I thought that I would give you um, a sewing tip in case you're new or um, you just like to have special little tricks in your hat to use when you're sewing. So as an actual heirloom seamstress, somebody who has sewn and taught heirloom classes, one of my favorite tips that I used to teach is when we're sewing, especially on these fine, fine cottons that are used in the heirloom um, sewing, I don't know, industry. I don't think it's really an industry. We'll just call it um, craft world. Um, we're using fabrics like Batiste or Voile or um, super fine cottons like Liberty or Silk. One of my favorite heirloom fabrics is Silk de Peony. Um, that's not what I wanted to do, but that's what I'm doing apparently. Um, so anyway, my, my point in, in bringing that up is when we're sewing, um, it's very important to make our seams look absolutely beautiful. An heirloom is something that you'll have, um, you know, probably past your lifetime. And if the seams look really, really, really good, it's one of the hallmarks of, of heirloom sewing. So what I suggest is basically the, the first tip, and that's the only one I'm going to give today. And that is, um, you've made your seam, you've sewn your fabric, and you're ready to go to the sewing machine. I'm trying to find a piece of fabric. Okay, here we go. So we've stitched, let's say, right here. We've made a, a seam along this edge right here. Now, I typically, in heirloom sewing, what I would have done, actually, is... A French seam whether you do that on the machine or by hand and that's where you're going to take your quarter of an inch seam allowance along the edge with the wrong sides of the fabric together and then my tip is take it to the ironing board at this phase and press you're not pressing anything open you're not doing anything special to the seam. You're just pressing it. Okay, then you come back and now you're going to flip. This would, of course, be stitched together. You're going to flip it so that the seam is on the inside and you've got right sides of the fabric together. So let me show you what that would look like. I really don't want to stitch this, so I'm going to use a pen. And that's why I like to use these super long glass head pens because they can hold a lot of fabric. 
So we're going to pretend like, well, that's not very straight. Here we go. Okay, we're just going to pretend for just a minute that we're sewing. And if this was an actual um, tip or technique used in this particular project, I would just wait to show you. But I wanted you to know this as it's National Sewing Month. And I really want to promote the fun and joy of sewing. Okay, so I've pressed with my iron. All right, and then I'm going to flip this seam, whether it's a side seam on a, a baby day gown or a um, little girl's smocked bodice dress, whatever you're stitching. Now you're going to put the right sides of your fabric together and you're going to press it again. If you're, if you're sewing something heirloom in one of my classes, this is what you would be doing. Okay, so now you're pressing that seam again with your iron and then you take another um, go at the machine. We're going to pretend like that's what this is. I'm sewing and I'm sewing enough that I can make sure that I'm catching the full amount within this. Now, sometimes if you've got um, a little extra on your initial st uh, stitch on that seam, you can trim it down. It will be encased. Um, and that, that is something I recommend in one of the advanced classes where you would actually take a quarter of an inch, press, and then cut down to an eighth of an inch, and then do this step. And I'm not going to go all the way, but now we've pressed again. And now we're going to flip it out to the right side. I didn't go all the way down with my pins, but this would be your seam right here. And that's your final and third press on that. That's with, you know, if you're sewing an heirloom garment. Um, if you're making a pair of PJs, even if you're not sewing with an heirloom stitch, go ahead and make that stitch. You certainly don't have to press this at the pinning stage. But let's say you've got, you're making PJ pants. And this is that side seam. You would definitely be first thing stitching with your right sides of your fabric together. I recommend taking up your 5 8 inch seam, press it, and then turn your fabric to the correct side and then do whatever type of pressing you want to do to finish that up. But when you do that, it helps the, the cotton thread, I hope you're using with cotton fabrics, um, sort of mesh with the fibers of your cotton fabric. It's just a really good idea to, um, to do it that way. And of course, if you have any questions at all about what I just explained, which I don't know how clear it was, but if you have questions, please don't hesitate to drop a comment below or go to my Facebook, Laurie's Heirloom Sewing, and um, you can either you know private message me or go ahead and message on my Facebook page and I will be happy to answer those questions. Now, when I left off yesterday, um, we were in the process of cutting four pieces of fabric for the strap on this bag. So I have one, two, three, four. However, they are exactly this much from this line on the pattern to here, too short. So I will be piecing that. And what I plan to do here is measure out <laughs> I'm sure you're wondering why is she using that? Well, if you know me very well, you know that I'm very reluctant to throw things away. Um, 
I always try to repurpose whatever I can. And uh, yesterday, I was looking for my ruler, my my straight my straight edge ruler here for my sewing, and I was I was like, you know, I'm never gonna find it. Not happening. It actually happened a few days ago. So I'm just using a piece of cardboard that came in the mail. You know those, it's not really cardboard. I guess it's cardstock mailer. Okay, I'm double checking to make sure I have this correct. I do. So if I cut out this one, I'll have two. I need to cut two four times. I could cut it on the fold, but I really don't want to... I don't want to do that. I want to use this edge right here. And actually, now that I think about it, that's on both ends. So let's use our head, Laurie. What we can do here is just cut four. I'm not sure that's a straight line. It's not really. If I cut two and four, I can add it. Of course, it would be, would push it up on both sides, which I'm trying to visualize how this will look. I've done it before. I believe it was the bee bag when I had to piece the handle due to the, the constraints of my fabric. So, there's one. There's one. Oh. So let's see. If I pin this, I will lose a little bit with this seam allowance. As you can see, this is why when I start making a bag, especially, I wouldn't do this with a clothing um, option, but um, for a bag, I want to make sure my birds are going in the same direction, and they're not, so I'd have to fix that. Let's see. Yeah, okay, these are. And then I would lose a little bit on this end with that seam allowance again. I'd have to make sure they're both the same seam allowance. But I want to see just how off. This is a friction pin, by the way. It erases with the heat of my iron. So I'm going to take this pattern piece and check to see. Okay, so we are slightly, we really truly just need that extra little bit right there, but, okay. So what I'm going to do is I will go ahead and do this and then I'll make these seams because I like where that's falling. <clears throat> and then I'll make adjustments on each end that way. Okay. So I have one. It does create a little bit extra sewing that you have to do for sure. Um, but sometimes those little extra touches are is special and sweet. And we'll put a dot there so I know where to line this up. And once I get my sewing room set up and and put put back together, I mean I really can't say put together because This sewing room has never been put together for me since we just moved into this house. And there's just so much that has to be done. Um, but once 
things are the way I want them. Um, I feel strongly that the projects will start to really, uh, really happen. I have so many ideas, so many things I want to make. Um, plus, I, I'm planning to uh, start teaching again, which really makes me happy. Um, I'll be doing heirloom sewing classes again. And my plan is, I'm just going to hold these on here like that. My plan is to do those one-on-one. -on -one. Um, so if you're local, if you live in Mukilteo, Washington, or somewhere nearby, and you would like to take heirloom sewing classes, um, I will be offering a crazy quilt with um, with lace and you know batiste or silk or a combination of those fabrics. Um, those are generally done for say a baby's christening. Um, you can you can do them for um, someone else, but because the fabrics are expensive and using uh, fine Swiss lace, cotton lace, um, it just tends to be. Oh, I forgot to measure that. A, a little bit more expensive, but if that's what you would wanted to do, then we would do it. I had students in Kansas who took that class, and typically we made the we made a block about this size, and that would be on a pillow, so about eighteen inches square, um, you know, with some variance to a small degree, um, and then. Like I said, that would be made into um, a, like a boudoir pillow. Um, I did have one woman who was making one for her uh, soon-to-arrive grandchild. Uh, it was absolutely gorgeous. So um, I just love fine lace and fine fabrics and the techniques of heirloom sewing. Um, I will also teach a beginning smocking class. Um, should you want to take that class, just send me a message. Um, we will be doing um, geometric smocking. I don't ever start out teaching picture smocking. So um, if you know how to do geometric smocking and you want a picture smocking class, um, that is one that I would not teach one-on-one. -on -one. I'd rather teach to set, you know, two, three students at a time. Um, I have found that the focus in a one-on-one -on -one class in picture smocking tends to devolve um, quickly. It just does. So if we want to stay focused and uh, locked in to our project, Kind of feel like we need to have more than one student in that class. Geometric smocking because it's for a beginner, someone who's never smocked. Um, you know, we'll we'll use the pleating machine that I have, and I will also teach you how to hand pleat. So if you find yourself desperate for a project and you want to pleat the fabric and don't have access to a pleater, um, you can certainly purchase fabric that will accommodate those needs so that you can just plead at home and then smock it's to your little heart's content. My ring keeps catching on my scissors. It's driving me nuts. Okay, so I've got all these pieces put together for the handle. And that's where that's gonna go. So I think the next step in the process of the bag is so we are page two. Okay. I'm on page one. <laughs> yeah. So we have our pocket 
pinned to the fabric on the outer piece here. And I've made this bag three times now, and I can tell you it asks you to basically, um, you know, kind of do a little um, basting stitch. I can think, I'm sure of it. Anyway, a basting stitch around. I don't think that's necessary. Um, we've basically quilted this. And in some regard, that is, that's what this is for um, on the top part, is to give it some structure. And we've done that. So since I don't want to really add a whole lot of extra stitches to this, I'm not going to do those stitches across the top. That is what they tell you to do on the pattern. But that's not what I've done, and it's not what I plan to do here. And then you put this pocket onto the front part of your bag and you baste. You need to baste in an area where you can pull the threads if you choose to do the basting. I'm not going to because the strap sections here that we will create are, um, if I'm not mistaken, you fold this in half. Two strap sections, okay, right. Wow, it's been a while. Okay, so you, you put these two pieces of fabric together like this. You stitch along this edge and then you're going to fold this open. Basically, you've already done one side, so you're gonna turn it inside out. That's how you make the straps for this bag. And then the straps are stitched into place and cover up this raw edge. So I don't wanna add that bulk. I did it once and I did not like the way it turned out. And I chose to leave this unstitched. And when I'm ready to put my straps on that are already completed, you know, they're stitched, they're all together, they're ready to go. Um, the finished edge covers up the raw edge of that pocket. And then you can just stitch along that edge where you're supposed to. And you only have one row of stitching. You don't have all that extra excess or you don't have to worry about pulling out the basting. I have my um, pocket pinned on here. So that's that's what's going to happen with the pocket and the straps. And then we're going to move into putting the um, side edge pieces around here. And then we attach the back side of, the, of this fabric and then we do our lining. Now I chose, at one point I was planning to use this right here that I had created as a pocket for the outside, but I decided to put it on the inside. I mean, I think it's a little bit too um, personalized for an outside pocket. And I like the fact that it's got these little lines here. And what I plan to, to do, although it doesn't tell you to do that in the pattern, is I'm going to make this a divided pocket. So her initials will be um, for pens, for a water bottle, for you know a notebook or maybe a phone um, on the inside of the, the lining, which would basically look like this because the bottom is also that nice wide edge. But we will begin to see that come together um, as we're putting all of this um, puzzle together um, with with a little bit of change and some some fun additions. Um, I have got to run to the post office. I sold some silk ribbon to someone in oh, I believe it was Colorado. Um, I've been using Mercari, which um, I'm not. They're not paying me. It's non-sponsored. It's just um, I've been trying to kind of thin out and call out some of the products in my, my sewing room 
um, because I used to have a shop and I'm just absolutely overrun with um, heirloom patterns, heirloom books. Um, I have um, smocking plates and heirloom, uh, let's see, shadow embroidery plates, which are also listed on Mercari. I mean, it's just an insane amount of stuff. And I thought, well, rather than hang on to it where nobody can enjoy it, I'll just um, send it out into the world so that someone who really wants it can um, enjoy it at a discounted uh, price. So I've got to run to the post office and mail that. And then um, I'm absolutely thrilled that my older daughter and her husband are coming up to visit us next week. And that's why we, we really, all of us have to get this bag done. Um, I want to be able to give it to her as well as some plants that I've got out in the yard. Um, and I have to get the room cleaned up. My sewing room is an absolute shambles. If ever the term, the room was flipped upside down, applies, this is the room where that totally applies. Um, and anyway, I want to get it ready for uh, for my daughter's and her husband's visit, as well as my classes. Um, it's a great space for teaching. There's lots of lovely natural light, and I think it would be a lot of fun. So anyway, I hope everybody has a wonderful day. Um, it is Wednesday, uh, the first Wednesday of September 2019. So we're kind of heading into fall. Um, enjoy your day, whatever you're doing. We're praying for those down on the East Coast that were would be affected by Dorian, uh, the hurricane that seems to just be slowly churning up the East Coast. Um, everybody say prayers for those that might be affected. And um, try to have a happy heart today. And I look forward to seeing you back here to get this first first part of this bag basically done. Thank you for watching. Like and subscribe if you wish.